Hey, hello, folks. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good, good evening, wherever you happen to be. Glad you joined us for another version of our Book Baby Live broadcast. My name is Stephen Spots. I'm the president emeritus of the company. Uh, that means I get to walk around the place and, and point things out and don't really have a role anymore. No, it's a lot of fun. I get to do things like this. And that's why I'm here today with a kind of an interesting show. This was actually suggested by one of the folks, or actually many of the folks, writing into me between each one of these broadcasts with questions. Mostly they were about their books they'd already published, about what they can do. They published it a year ago. They published it, you know, five years ago. What can they do? So I thought, you know what? Let's put together a show that talks about reviving that book. So I'm calling it Book CPR, and these are 10 tips to revive your previously unpublished book. So without further ado, Carter, my loyal assistant, let's get to the Hey, let's try this again. Um, something went wrong with our broadcast, so I'm going to bring up my screen again. Sorry about this. Technical fun and games, and I'm going to share it. Hopefully Carter is there to pull it up onto the screen. Here we go. All right, let's try this uh, one more time. So book CPR, I'm sure we'll edit that out in the final version, right, Carter? Not the camera up and down. Okay, here we go. So that's me. Uh, my name is Stephen Spots. Again, uh, I like to tell people a little bit about myself. Now, as you might see on the side, I'm wearing an Oregon Duck shirt. I'm a huge college football fan. We're about to kick off the season right now. Uh, each year, I, I go through that, you know, letting people know that our biggest rival is the Washington Huskies. And I believe a public service announcement is in order here. Let people know that, you know, Ted Bundy, the serial killer, he was a graduate of the University of Washington. So just Think of that when you think about our rivalry. All right, all right. That's that's kind of mean, and I do love our folks in Seattle. So maybe to make it up for you, I am a self-published author. That's the other thing I wanted to share today. So perhaps I could someday write a book about all the glorious victories of Washington football. Of course, it'll be, it'll be a small pamphlet. Short, all right, let's go beyond that. Anyway, I'm here to help you. I know the trials and travails of publishing. I know, you know how difficult it can be, but also I know the thrills and the feeling of satisfaction once it's, it's done. So I'm here to help you, and that's what these broadcasts are all about. Usually 30 minutes. Um, and we're going to speed things along so we can get to many questions at the end. I spend about half the time on topics I'm covering, and then the end of the, at the end of the presentation, I do have time to take your questions. Um, so please, if you can put your questions in, in the comment section, we'll collect them. I'll try to get to them as many as I can um, before the end of the show. And if I don't get to all of them, I'll try to email you directly or I might do a blog post. Also in this, um, one lucky attendee at this event will get a chance to have a consultation with me. I'll talk to them for 15, 30, an hour about their book project. Those are always a lot of fun. I really do enjoy doing them. Now, here's how you do it. You share this video and you tag a friend in the comment section, and you're automatically entered to win, all right? So please do that, you know, many friends as you as you want, and we'll, we'll take a look, and we'll draw a lucky name at the end of the presentation. Hopefully, I'll have a chance to share it. Also, again, share your questions in the comment section. We'll look at those. Um, and one more housekeeping item, we have a great Facebook group called Friends of Book Baby. It's about 1,500 members strong. I peer into there every once in a while. Great conversations going on. We don't really, you know, spend much time in there. If somebody has a question, it's a good forum for us to actually help people along too. So I hope you can um, possibly, you know, join that up and, and be, be a member of that group. Okay. All right. So let's get moving on here. So today's topic, we're going to call it book CPR. And what do I mean by that? Well, look, maybe you published a book last year, maybe even five years ago. You know, sales were not what you really had expected. Maybe you didn't have time or knowledge about book marketing, okay? So, and there could be a lot of reasons why that book didn't work. Maybe it was right, not the right time to release it, all right? Maybe you didn't understand the need to really do book marketing, and that is an essential part of the job. Author marketer should be like one word in, in, in your dictionary, knowing that if you're an author, you've got to market it as well, all right? Also, maybe you thought, oh, you know what? I possibly have reached all the readers I possibly can. Well, I have a graphic to illustrate how how this could be now i don't know about you i'm a fan of space um can't can't wait for the next rocket to lift off here soon 
uh, to go back to the moon. This is a shot from the new Webb telescope that gets out there discovering amazing you know, things each day. Each one of those is a galaxy filled with millions and billions of stars. So I want to illustrate this to say that's, a, that's an illustration of the number of readers that your book has probably been exposed to, which is just so nil. There's a huge universe of potential readers for you to get your book out to. And I don't care how old it really is. If you, if you have a digital, if you have a book in a digital format, you can revive it, you can do things with it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay. So again, our goal today is to bring it back, bring it back to life, give it some book CPR. And these are these are some of my my tips. And again, I want to point something out that's important. You know, I did. Uh, you know, when I was writing this presentation, it was pointed towards authors who have their books out there already. But you know what? All these ideas. Hey, if you have a book that's about to come out, or you have a book that just came out, or you have one six months from now, these are all good ideas for you to filter away to say, you know what? These are universally great techniques. I may not do it in that same order, but know that these are 10 things that you should absolutely be doing to market your book, either at the beginning or again, trying to have, you know, add some more life to your book. All right. Now, the first one is really obvious. And when people come to me and say, you know what, my book didn't sell, the first thing I want to say is, let me look at your cover. And I would say half the time, 50% of the time, my first recommendation is you need to change, get a new cover. So here's an example of one that we actually did, all right? And sure enough, sales took off. It just, there is a look to covers. I can't tell you exactly what is a good and a bad cover, but come on, you really do know the difference between what a professional one looks like. Here, here's some examples, and I can do this all day long. Here's an example. Somebody came to us and said, you know what, can I get a new cover? Sure you can. And by the way, Book Baby can do them. A lot of other designers out there can do them. They can absolutely lift up, you know, the content of your, of your book and really make it much more compelling and eye, you know, that catch, catch the eye of your potential readers. Here's a book that we did as well. You know, Chandra wanted a new cover. Boom. We performed that for her. Sales took off. A really nice success. And then finally, I don't know if this ever made its way to a cover. This was somebody's idea. Said, okay, great. How about this? He was thrilled with the result. The book is doing very, very well. So again, these appearances really do matter. And now I get a chance to correct what I said in an earlier broadcast, which was wrong. I said in the past, hey, if you change your cover, do you need to have a new ISBN? I said, mm, no, <clears throat> that's not correct. If you do change your cover, that is a substantial change to your book. You will need a new ISBN for your ebook. If you've changed that, your printed book cover, all right, as well. It is a substantial change. I've now updated it. I've made Sam and the distribution team very happy that I've actually made up for that error. So there you are, Sam. All right. Anyway, you do do need to have the new ISBN, but it's it's no it's no never mind. But it is a second edition of your book. All right. Second is this, and I'm not proud of this graphic I found, but but it's the best thing I could do to kind of show about the old adage about you know you're trying to you know how how many how many fishing lines do you have out well. You need to fish in many ponds. And how, how this applies to authors, of course, is a lot of people just say, I just need to be an Amazon. I can tell you now, and it's never been a good idea to have Amazon as your only distribution point. I can tell you this Christmas, it certainly is not. Um, I encourage you to go on your own and look for a Publishers Weekly article that was published in the last couple of weeks about the struggles that Amazon's having right now in their warehouses, especially about books. It is a warning sign to us. Um, so the advice I have is make sure you're in as many outlets as you possibly can be. Don't just hang your hat on Amazon. Sure, they move a lot of books. Of course they do. And we know they do. But internationally, they're not number one. There are many other bookstores. So the, the moral of the story here is that you know, be a fish in many ponds. Don't be a big fish in a pond or don't be, you know, or don't just stay in one pond. Get you find your readers all around the world. Remember that Hubble, they were the, the web telescope, right? There's many galaxies. Try to be in as many of them. Also, we stress to our authors, and this is becoming increasingly profitable for the folks who have taken this advice, sell direct to your own readers. There are many other ways. You, you can do it on your own website. You can do it through our bookshop pages, but you'll make more money. You'll have a better relationship with your readers, and you'll have you know, an unimpeded flow of books going out to your readers if you sell them direct and have you know an arrangement going with your printer, your print-on-demand printer, to have that being shipped direct to your authors, or I'm sorry, excuse me, direct to your readers. It's very important to have that link. So again, overall moral of the story is have lots of distribution, 
you know, get your book out there as widely as you can. All right. So the same is sort of a cousin here as well. Um, we in marketing, you know, we we have an adage about saying that, you know, make it easy for people to buy. And for, for that means it might, might mean about locations. When it comes to authors, though, make it easy for people to buy is to make sure you've got your book in all the different formats that people like to buy. There are people who love to read print books and they'll only read print books. People who love ebooks and they'll only read e. I have to be one in the middle. I toggle back and forth between print if I'm going to the beach or someplace outside, or I love my ebooks. So I have I happen to be at an appointment, I can take out my phone and read. It, it's it, it's convenient. So look, if you only have print, consider adding ebooks. If you have print, consider add, you know or or, vi or vice versa. We also have a couple of authors, one of which I'm going to mention a little bit later on. They have hardcover. We're recommending you know what maybe you want a soft cover book to have a kind of a lower priced option to them. And they're doing that. And coming soon, and in about six weeks, I got myself into trouble a couple of months ago also by mentioning this early, but I'm going to anyway. Audiobooks for indie authors, it is coming. It's a reality. Uh, it's going to be affordable. It's going to be fast and easy. And it's going to be through Book Baby. Uh, the royalty opportunities for authors are going to be huge. Um, it's it's really kind of going to set the self-publishing industry on, on its ear. It's the first it's the first ever offer in this way. It's affordable. It's finally within reach for, in, for indie authors. So watch your emails because you probably can't avoid it if you're on our list. In about six weeks or so, we'll be announcing this program. Anybody with a book, either through Book Baby or not through Book Baby, you have a digital file, you'll be able to, to create your own audio book for a very low rate and make a lot of money on it. So stay tuned on that. Okay. Number four is this. I've talked a lot about metadata during this broadcast. What is it? It's data about data. Sounds really boring, but it's really interesting when it comes to attracting your readers. This is the stuff that people read on your, your Amazon page. This is the stuff that you read on your bookshop page or your personal website about the author. Um, take a hard look at that. There are people who have, again, they spend you know a year on their book and they spend a day on their metadata. Now, they should spend a long time on their metadata to make sure you've got all the right details, the bio, the overview of the book, the description. It's critically important for you to have all that kind of information. All right? Readers need it or else they're really not going to be able to, be able to find it. All right? Fifth one is this, and it's kind of tough. All right, Asking people for reviews. I owe somebody a review right now. I'm going to do it this week and get it out to them. All right, And it's kind of a never-ending process. All right? There's no such thing as having too many reviews. And it's, you know, having, having you know, a nice, you know, kind of critical mass of reviews really does form some kind of tipping point. When somebody goes to your Amazon page and they say, oh, look, these are 15 reviews. Most of them are four and five star. It's a pretty good endorsement, all right? We have a customer who did a blitz. I found out about this a, a few months ago. They just, they said, you know what? I didn't do a good job getting reviews. I'm going to spend my next month or so not writing. I'm just going to ask people for reviews. And he did. And he got a bunch of them. And, he, and his sales went from tens a month to hundreds a month just by getting the word of mouth out there, you know, asking for people, beg, borrowing. Again, there are rules to reviews. And you can review some of my other uh, blog posts or these live broadcasts about who can do a review for you and who can't. Uh, basically, you know, relatives and friends and people on your Amazon gift list, don't do that. But a lot of other folks can so I strongly urge you to do that. It's well, it's well worth your time. All right. Sixth thing is this again, not for everybody, but consider advertising. All right. You know, remember that web telescope image? You barely scratch the surface about number of people who you've hit. All right. Social media, it's not going away, much as I would like it to at times. You know, and again, audiences that might be interested. I advise somebody who said, you know what, I'm do I'm running ads. And and I you know he and he has in the category of spy thriller and you know I looked at his book I read a couple of chapters and said you know what? and this is the kind of book I love to read I said how about thinking about it more specifically instead of calling it a spy thriller it's really a British Cold War espionage novel mystery he said oh okay that's interesting now I, I don't know the results but I, I think he's pretty happy so far with reshaping his ads in that way and also we we have a Google ad network service and others do too and we're seeing good results there. Again, this is not for everyone. This is to attract readers. You know, as I explained again in one of these earlier broadcasts, advertising is not about direct selling. All right. It's about getting eyeballs to your pages, your selling pages, your own website. And then you've got to do the job to romance them into buying the book. Advertising is what brings them to the site. And you've got to kind of close that sale with the content that you create. 
Number seven is this, and I still get questions about again the broadcast we did a couple of months back about email. Uh, it was one of our it was one of our most popular, and like I said, I, I'm still getting lots of questions about it. Go back and watch that. You know, those those principles are really strong, and something the first thing I would advise an author, even starting out or again trying to revive their book, get the email list going. You know, learn how to use it to sell your books. Um, the 25 to 1 rule is even more important today. That I'm going to update it today. It's 50 to 1. What do I mean by that? For every 50 likes you might get on your Twitter or your Facebook or your Instagram or whatever they say, your loves or, or nods or winks or whatever they call it in the social media world, that's equal to one email name that you have been gifted by someone. Someone has said, hey, I'm interested in you as an author and your book. So here's my email uh, address. Please send me information. Now, it's your obligation as an author with it, with a good list is to go ahead and do that. So please, it's not spam. You need to go ahead and you know think about you know what material you're going to send to them and, and do it diligently. Number eight is this. Again, this is not for probably this is more from for nonfiction books about getting endorsements. Uh, and this is kind of a long, long project too. try to find someone who is an expert in your field to get them to read the book. And it's beyond a review. It's someone who says, hey, this person really knows what they're talking about. All right. That's a, it's kind of a review on steroids, if you want to think of it that way. But also, if you have to find the right endorser, they themselves might have their own audience. And having this person truly endorse you and not just a kind of thing, hey, it's a great book, but you know, giving you a nice blurb, giving you a paragraph that you can use, it can be a very powerful extension, leverage into their audience so that you can add to your sales. So endorsements is something, that, again, think about, not for every single book, but for, for, for some, I think it's good. All right. Ninth is this, seeking out interviews. All right. Now, you know, um, you know, the, the, you know, Gone are the days when people are, are on Oprah doing their books or the Today Show doing doing a lot of the books. They don't do many segments in that way. But I think of interviews in, in, two, in two ways. All right? I think of it in terms of baseball terms, not football, not college football, baseball. Look for, look for singles, which is like doing your local media. But you can be swinging for the fences for other kinds of interviews as well. And again, regional media, bloggers, podcasts, sizable follows, all worthwhile. But every once in a while, you think about, boy, what if I could get a famous person to get my book on the air? And that happened this month, as a matter of fact. Dr. Shania Obushan, she has a book out called If You Touch, I'll Tell. It's, and it, she calls it an alarm system for children. And she had the idea, by the way, we're going to have this blog, we're going to have this story well crafted in our blog com coming up here. She decided, you know what, I'm going to send this book out because I think it's really important. So she happened to send it to a person in New York City who I happen to watch every morning, Gail King. And Gail King is going out to see her grandchild in California and read it on the airplane and said, I love this book. And she came back, and I remember the morning, I, I didn't know this was a book baby book, and I remember watching the segment saying, boy, that's a really great interview. She interviewed her and you know told her all about the book, and I said, Boy, I hope that's a book baby book. And sure enough, I went back into our bookshop and there it was. So you know what? She swung for the fences. She went out there. She thought about the people. She probably wrote a great letter. Again, I'll share all the details um, in a blog post coming up. But again, that's the kind of thinking that, you know what, takes it beyond and, you know, takes that book beyond. And by the way, the book sales have been fantastic. Now, she only had a hardcover book. We're urging her Get it out in soft cover too, so you can get the price down and even increase your sales. And that's, I believe, that's what she's doing well. But again, great example of thinking big and, and going for a great interview, and it worked out well. All right. Finally, this this is number ten. I think this advice is for if you're starting out, if you're right, starting to write a book, or if you want to extend a life. Don't stop believing in it. Again, a book is going to be around for a long, long time. In some cases, it's going to be a long, longer than you're around. So. Be constant and consistent in your marketing. All right, marketing is part of the process. When I say author marketer, I truly believe in that term. You know, once you are an author, you're unless you have the wherewithal to hire publicists and things like that, you're going to have to market that as well. It doesn't take that much time, and once you master it, you know, it's really going to be something that will, will fulfill you know your your hopefully your desires. And I hope all these tips can revive your book just a little bit. I want to review them quickly one more time. You know. Maybe a new cover. Maybe you need better distribution. Are you in all formats? You have an ebook and print. All right, metadata, something to look at, 
Spend a couple of minutes on it. You know, spend some time really looking at your bio. Do you need to update it? How about getting some more reviews? Are there people that now that in the past few years since your book has been out, maybe they're a better type of type of person to review your book? You know, time thing can, can change things. All right. The other thing, ads for authors. Again, not for everybody, but again, if you have a if you have the book that's that, that, that's ready for that kind of exposure, and you have the backup of a great you know of great metadata of great content on your page, ads for authors can be very effective. The power of email. I'll never you know I will die on that hill. Get a great email list. Get it going. It can have a life of its own. Endorsements can be very powerful. Not for everybody. Obviously, interviews can be life changing as they were for the good doctor. And then number 10 is really stay the course, all right? Don't get to the point where you need the CPR, all right? Do a little bit each week. Uh, I do say that some of the best ways to sell your first book is to write your second and your third book, but that's for another another time and place, all right? I'd like to, I'd like to uh, kind of conclude with some messages that we've gotten, and here's a nice note from Jay Hart. Pleasure working with Book Baby. The complete progress from quote to edited manuscript It's simple and quick. And my book proofread, and the editor did a great job. Our editing really is top notch, and really everybody needs to get their book edited. There is no book that has words in it that doesn't need editing. So strongly encourage you to to do so. All right, got a great podcast coming out. Actually, it's already dropped this month. We have professional self publishing with a six figure storyteller, Jasmine Womack, uh, CEO of Impact. She discusses her work and how she coaches writers to use impactful storytelling in their nonfiction work. So. You check it out at our website or go to to uh, our podcast page wherever you get your wherever you listen to your podcast. Great media. All right, and I do believe it is question time. So we've got about nine minutes. Let's try to get to them. And by the way, hopefully we will we'll be um, picking our author who wins the consultation. All right, so let's get to this. All right, Regina said, "Who do you recommend for a print on demand printer?" Come on, Regina. Really, am I going to say anybody else but Book Baby? Yes, it's Book Baby. Here's why. We do all formats, the maximum number of trim sizes accepted in the print on demand world. We do hardcover. Uh, we do hardcover under 75 pages. Uh, there's a situation going on with Amazon. A lot of children's books are obviously under 75 pages. Right now, I understand that Amazon will not do print on demand, hardcover under 75 pages. So if you have a children's book in hardcover, Book Baby is a great choice. Uh, we ship direct to the readers. Uh, your inventory is 24-7, 365. I could go on and on, but I think you see the point. Yes, we are a great provider of print-on-demand. You're dealing direct with a printer. You're not going with anybody else. You're dealing direct to us. Order comes into us. We ship it out. All you do is you just collect, you just check, cash the checks. So it really couldn't be any simpler. It's us. But thank you. Thank you for the, for the opportunity for the commercial. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Charlotte asks, can hardcover be added after softcover has been out? Absolutely. Um, now, there will be some differences in the probably in the spine. I'm not the technical person, but I know that the design of a softcover spine and hardcover spine is different. So there will be some modifications, probably some slight costs, unless you have your own designer. Uh, but but nothing major. But absolutely, again, require its own ISBN. Uh, but yes, absolutely. And, and it's a chance to have a relaunch party. Yippee, I've got my hardcover out. Some of our authors use them as like collector's items or prizes, all right, as they're building their email list. Oh, look, uh, here's a way to build your email list. Hey, send me your email, and I'll do a drawing, and um, 10 lucky winners this month will get a hardcover version of my book that's signed, and I'll mail it to them. Great way to build your email list that I always love. Okay. Uh, Charlotte again asks, must, re must reviews be on Amazon to be, to be effective? Well, I'm going to say they sh they should be on they should be on, on on Amazon because let's face it that's where a lot of the action is. Um, but look, we encourage people to get those reviews on their bookshop pages as well. We are strongly encouraging people again to to move their move the traffic of their books through bookshop. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, really, it, it, it's not all that different for us. All right, I mean we we print books whether they're sold through Amazon or it's, or they're sold through bookshop. The advantages, again, of Bookshop is I get to pay you a lot more money because there are fewer hands in the till, and you get 50, 50 0% of the profits of any printed book. You get 85% of the profits of any ebook, the most of anybody out there. Um, but again, moving it, the traffic, most of, I don't know the exact number, but I'm going to use this one to be safe, 85% of all 
independent book sales happen as a result of authors sending links directly to the site of pr to pr prospective readers. It's not somebody surreptitiously going through Amazon or going through any other website and saying, oh, I want to buy this. Typically, it's how somebody has either an, you know, an ad or a Twitter conversation or something else, and you've sent a link to your reader, and the reader buys where the author has told them to go. Send them to the bookshop. You'll be happier. Your customer will be, will be happy. They'll, they'll get it very quickly. Everything is in stock. So back to your question. Make sure your reviews are on Amazon and on your bookshop page or your website if you're if you're not selling it through BookBaby. Okay. Marnie asks, my book is already in all formats, but can't seem to get any out of the retail other than Amazon guidance. Well, yes. I mean, you need to find another distributor. Hello, book baby, um, to get your book in in Amazon. You know, you you're the one who sort of uh, you know is is in charge of saying where your book is going to be placed for distribution. In terms of ebooks, you know, it's a matter of just adding ebook distribution to you know to it. So you come to Book Baby, we'd add you into every other account other than Amazon. You'd keep your own Amazon account if, if you want to, or we can take that over for you. It'd be no never mind. We don't take a we don't take a cut out of your Amazon earnings or anywhere else. So it would be easier if you just converted everything to us and we'll 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 take take care of it. But so that's how you do it. On the print on demand side, it's kind of an either or. You're either with Amazon directly with print on demand, or you got to pull out of there, come into the Book Baby system where we're going to give you, you know, Amazon and Books a Million and many many other out, out, outlets, Google and, and, and other other places, um, where where you can where you can get that. Uh, also, your your own bookshop page as well. So you're in charge of determining where your distribution is. So uh, call, call call our bookshop folks if you have any questions about it. Okay. Um, Pat asks, can you update your metadata if your book is already published? Oh, my goodness, yes. Um, oh, the, our, my, my, back, my back room people are not going to be happy I said this, but you can go in and change your metadata every day if you want to. Metadata is, uh, it's, it's, it's alive. I mean, I changed my metadata last month on a book I published, you know, three years ago. Um, absolutely. It's, it's meant to be updated. Frankly, uh, it's something that you know you you test different concepts on it and see and see if if that's you know prompting people to to buy your books more more than others. Absolutely, go in, change it as often as you like. It's really and it really you should be up updating. Uh, a YouTube question: What about converting an existing paperback booklet to a downloadable form that is still copy protected, allow the customer to print a copy for their own use? Are there services available for that? That's a good question. Uh, I recommend you call our our book baby experts. I don't want to sell something or offer something that may not be available. I'm not sure exactly. Give us a call. Explain it to them. They're going to give you the answer in 30 seconds, and I'd be fumbling around, looking around our website to do that. So I, I encourage you to go there. Um, Maura asks, I have a book that was published 10 years ago with a different publisher. Would I have to completely start again with a relaunch? Well, first thing you need to do, you need to get, and I should have mentioned this, um, you need to make sure you have the rights to the book, all right? If you published it with someone else, you need to get it in writing that they no longer have title to the book. Uh, there's a process for this. You call them up. You make sure you get it in writing so that, yeah, you indeed have title to the book. And, you know, until you do that, you really can't do anything with it. But, you know, if, if they haven't done anything with it, they really – there's, there really should be no never mind. You shouldn't have to pay anything to get, get the rights to your own book back. But that's an important first step. Once you do that, absolutely. The book is yours. It's all, your intellectual property. You can do with it what, what you may. All right, let's do a couple more questions. Shirley, can my novel be filled for the feature author in the book baby shop? It can be. Luck of the draw, though, um, you could send you could send me an email, and I can talk to Joe, and maybe we'll see what we can do. You know, loyal viewers, you know, you never know. I might I might be able to influence Joe, our bookshop manager. So you never know. So drop me an email. We'll see what we can do. Uh, Jake asks, should we as authors have copies to direct sell? Oh God, yes, absolutely. Uh, in the trunk of my car, I've got ten of my books. And um, while there may, maybe in the winter I should have like a box of books so I could get better traction in the snow, that's not what they're for. You know, every once in a while, somebody, you know, I, I meet, meet with folks and they say, you know what, um, you know, maybe they, they, should, they should have a copy of my book. I don't sell it to them. I just hand it out. No question about it. You know, for some people, speakers especially, I mean, their book is like their calling card, right? So they have boxes of, of books. 
no question about it. Have some books on hand. Uh, it's it's a great way to you know uh, get get a conversation going with 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 some readers. Absolutely, have some on hand. Keep them on hand. All right. Uh, Ingrid asks, is it worthwhile to have children's book as an ebook? Excellent question. I would say typically no, um, for for one reason, and that's really for for more production reasons. All right, uh, ebooks are typically you know an ebook can go on an iPhone, an ebook can be on a, on a big screen. You need something um, for children's books are usually very graphic laden. All right. They, re they require something called fixed layout, which can be expensive. Now, if it's a small, you know, 12-page book, it's not that terribly expensive. But it's a 40-page children's book. It can be pretty expensive to have a fixed layout ebook, and that kind of renders the page almost like a J. Think of the page as a, as a JPEG. All right, it's static. It stays so that you know that as you go from one page to another. When you're reading an ebook dynamically, you know, just a textbook, you know that it changes based upon the size of your screen. We typically do not recommend that children's authors do look for ebooks. What they can do though is do hardcover, do softcover books, things like that. So typically that's that's not what the format is for children's books. All right, I think that is going to be about it. I can say we have a winner of Marnie McBain for a consultation this month. Marnie, I will be getting in touch with you and we'll have a nice talk sometime in September. All right, and so with that, I want to thank you very much. If you do have any other questions, Please send me an email, steve at bookbaby.com, and we'll be talking to you next month. Topic to be determined, but by the way, if you do have some ideas, I'm open to uh, doing a presentation like I did th this month based upon a reader inquiry. So with that, I'll say good day and get right in that book.